quantity theory, we found out that it basically explains um, the relationship between uh, money supply and inflation. So it's, it's a theory which explains uh, why uh, we see inflation in the long run. And the main culprit that we find is because of um, change in the money supply, which a central bank often pursues to um, to raise money for its um, for its expenditure. So, um, just as a quick revision, uh, the quantity theory of money, um, uh, the quantity equation, it looks something like this. It says that money times velocity is equal to its price times why? I also explained to you that there exists um, a very close relationship between uh, the quantity theory and the money demand function. So first, I'm going to show you what the money demand function looks like, or in other words, what are the determinants of money demand, and then I'm going to relate that function to the, uh, to the quantity theory. So what you see on the screen here is the real money balance. Uh, okay, So M is actually the money demand. The amount of money that we want that you want to hold at a given point in time, um, and P is the overall price level. So you know that this overall price level is either measured by the CPI index or the GDP deflator or the PPI index. So when you divide the nominal um, money demand by P, that um, so so this term is is called the real money demand. So in macroeconomics, you often hear about the terms nominal variables and real variables. So I want to clarify at this point that nominal variables, they are measured in terms of rupees, dollars. So they are measured in money form. Real variable is usually constructed when you divide the nominal variable by the overall price level. So here M is the nominal money demand. So for example, I would like to demand 100 rupees at a given point in time. So 100 rupees is actually the nominal money demand. Now, if in this economy, all the products sell for two rupees, so the real money demand is going to be 100 divided by two, which will give me 50. Okay, So 50 actually depicts the goods and services that I can purchase from that 100 rupee note. So money demand in nominal terms is equal to as 100 rupees. In real terms, it's equal to as 50 goods and services. So this money demand, the real money demand, um, let's see, it depends upon which variable. So a simple money demand function, it looks something like this. So on the left-hand side of the equation, I have the real money demand. Uh, the subscript D here, it represents that here we are talking about the real money demand. And it's a function of y. y is basically the output, or you can think of it as an income. So just think through what can be the relationship between y and the real money demand. If y increases, if my income increases, I would like to buy more goods and services. Hence, I would like to demand more money. Therefore, there exists a positive relationship between y and money demand. Okay, just listen to this point again. So if my income increases, I would like to buy more goods and services. And in order to buy those goods and services, I need money. So I'm going to demand more money. Hence, a negative, a positive relationship exists between Y and money demand. Now, if you look closely at this equation, we also have a constant term here, which is K. And what is K here? It is how much money people wish to hold for each dollar of income. So if you take the differential of this real money demand with respect to Y, you would get K. So what is the interpretation of K? It measures that by how much money demand is going to change if Y increases by one unit. Okay? So with an increase in Y, money demand may kitna farak padega. So if K is high, that means that as income increases, people want to hold more money. If K is small, that means as income increases, people are going to, uh, they're going to demand more money, but the magnitude of that increase is going to be now small. Okay. So this is a simple demand function where money demand is solely a function of Y. Now let's relate this money demand function to the 
quantity equation. So in the next slide here, you can see the demand equation and you can see the quantity equation. It's not very hard to see how the quantity equation can be transformed into the demand equation. What you need to do is that you just have to rearrange the quantity equation in such a manner that you take P on the left-hand side of the equation. So uh, when you do that, on the left-hand side, the equation becomes M divided by P and simply take velocity on the other side, on the right-hand side of the equation. So you can see that now the right-hand side the left-hand side of the equation is going to be m divided by p, and this is going to be equal to as 1 divided by v times velocity. Okay, times, sorry, y. It's going to be 1 divided by velocity times y on the right-hand side of the equation. So the connection is as follows. So k is simply the constant that you saw um, in this first equation, the constant k that you're seeing in the first equation, this is actually equal to as 1 divided by v. When people hold lots of money relative to their income, K is high. So that means money changes hands infrequently. And similarly, the equation from the equation is clearly visible that there exists an inverse relationship between K and V. When K is high, V should be low. And when K is low, velocity should be high. So if uh, people, if K is high, that means people want to hold a lot of their money uh, relative to their income, that means that uh, money changes hands less frequently. That is, V is low or the velocity of low is low. The speed with which money is circulating in the economy is low. So if you have a major chunk of your money, you are holding on to it. So the si baat hai, um, the money changes hand less frequently as a result, velocity is going to be low. Similarly, if K is low and you don't want to hold on to a lot of your money, so that means that um, uh, money to hai na, zyada tezi se economy circulate ho raha hai. Okay, so that's the connection between money demand and the quantity theory. Uh, later on, I'm going to modify the money demand by incorporating some other variables other than y, which can also influence the money demand. But we're going to see that um, uh, later. So back to the quantity theory of money, although I have gone through this, but uh, uh, let's just go over one more time for your revision. So the quantity equation, it assumes that velocity is constant. Um, so with that assumption, the quantity equation, it transforms to this. Now, uh, in the next step, what uh, we would like to do is that we're going to convert this equation in percentage form. So, um, yes, uh, this is again um, another, uh, this is again an explanation of the quantity theory. So, um, objective is of the quantity theory is to determine how price level is determined or how inflation can be explained by this particular theory. Velocity is assumed to be constant. Uh, y in this particular case uh, is going to be determined by the production function. Now, if we assume production function is constant, then Y will also be assumed to be constant. So um, this equation that you see here, um, it can be converted into percentage form and uh, the way you do that is by you, you, that is by taking log on both the sides. So um, according to mathematical rules, when you take log of two variables which are being multiplied, they can be written as log of m plus the log of v. And similarly, on the right hand side of the equation, it's going to be log of p plus log of y. And when you take uh, the differential of logs, this is what you're going to get. It's the this is actually the percentage, the first term that you see here, which you see delta M over divided by M. This is actually the percentage change in money supply. The second term is actually the percentage change in velocity. Then on the right hand side, the first term is the percentage change in prices, which you should be familiar with. This is the same as inflation. And the last term on the right, right hand side of the equation is the percentage change in output. Okay. So uh, most simply, the quantity theory of money can be written as follows. 
So um, the velocity, we have already assumed that to be constant. So this term, it falls out of the equation. And my equation simply, um, you know, it reduces to this thing here, where you can see that um, the change in money supply is equal to is inflation plus um, and the change in output, the percentage change in output. I'm going to denote uh, inflation by this Greek symbol, which is pi. So you can solve for inflation, and what you get is this equation. So inflation is equal to is percentage change in money supply minus percentage change in output. Now, a little, uh, previously, I, uh, I also, uh, up front, I made the assumption that uh, percentage change in output is also constant because the production function is constant. So if that is the case, uh, percentage change in y over y falls out of the equation, and then my quantity theory simplifies um, to the relationship where money supply has a one-to-one -one relationship with inflation. So if money supply is increasing by 10%, inflation is also going to increase by 10%. But if we continue to assume that output can change, then that might, that might not be the case. So the equation clearly shows if money supply is increasing by 10% and if output is increasing by 2%, then inflation is going to increase by 8%. So um, this equation, the, the equation in the green box clearly shows that um, if uh, we assume that output is allowed to change, then um, uh, there doesn't exist a one-to-one -one relationship between money supply and inflation. In the next slide, this point has been further clarified um, where you can see that the normal economic growth, by this we mean the percentage change in Y, it requires certain amount of money supply growth to facilitate the growth in transactions. So in simple words, what that means is that when your when output increases or when your income increases, you would like to make more transactions. And for those transactions, you require more money. Okay? So uh, that is why um, if money supply is increasing by 10% and if output is increasing by 2%, inflation is going to increase by 8% and not 10%, because some of the increase in money supply is actually required to finance increase in transaction as your income increases. Uh, but if money is growing at a greater rate than increase in Y, then that definitely will result in inflation in the economy. Right? So if um, the first term on the right hand side of the equation, that is the increase in the money supply, if this is more than the increase in Y, then inflation will definitely increase. All right, so um, now we are again making the simplifying assumption that let's assume that percentage change in output is constant. Uh, this assumption I, um, I made previously as well. But now I've shown you what happens if this assumption is made and uh, without this assumption. So if we assume the output can change, then of course, um, you know, uh, inflation will be gauged by the formula that you see in the green box. But if um, output is assumed to be zero, and if output growth is assumed to be zero, then the quantity theory of money predicts a one-to-one -one relationship between changes in money growth and changes in inflation. That is, if money supply is increasing by 10%, inflation should also increase by 10%. Now, um, now there are these, a few slides that I'm going to skip because I've already covered them. And uh, we're going to introduce or um, start off with a new concept which is the relationship between inflation and interest rate. Now, there are two types of interest rates. One is the nominal interest rate, which is denoted by I. This is not adjusted for inflation. It is the stated interest rate, the quoted interest rate. So if I uh, want to invest 100 rupees in a bank, the bank quotes is 100 rupees pay up 10% interest milega. So which is 10% hai na, that is the nominal interest rate. The real interest rate hota hai na, um, that is adjusted for inflation. 
So the real interest rate is going to be the nominal interest rate minus the rate of inflation in the economy. So let's suppose many ek saal ke liye ye saw rupay invest kiye hai at a nominal interest rate of 10%. Now at the end of this one year, my real return on my investment or the real interest rate is going to be the nominal interest rate minus inflation. Agar is ek saal mein inflation 2% rahi hai, the real interest rate or the real return on my investment will be 10 minus 2, which is 8%. So this example clearly shows the distinction between the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate. So nominal is the quoted interest rate. It's not adjusted for inflation, whereas the real interest rate is adjusted for inflation. All right, moving ahead, uh, the Fisher effect. Now, Fisher was an economist who came up with this relationship that the nominal interest rate is then simply equal to as the real interest rate plus inflation. This is a rearrangement of uh, the, uh, the equation that we saw in the last slide. So, if I go to this side, I go to the left hand side, and I push it on the right hand side of the equation, my equation transforms to this, which you can see right on your screen. This is called the Fisher equation. Or the official equation simply tells me that there exists a one-to-one -one relationship between inflation and nominal interest rate. R, um, it's going to be determined in the market for loanable funds. In the last chapter, which was chapter number three, we developed the loanable funds model developed and we assumed assume that where saving is equal to its investment, that is going to determine the equilibrium interest rate R. So R, the real interest rate is that framework we will uh, estimate karenge. Now once ye R hai na, it has been determined, we're simply going to plug this R in our Fisher equation. So um, hence, the increase in inflation causes an equal increase in nominal interest rate. Achha, to is, uh, so this one-to-one -one relationship is called the Fisher effect. Okay? And uh, is Fisher effect ko support karne ke liye hum data ki madad lete hai. Aur abhi jo aapko screen pe uh, inflation rates or nominal interest rate nazar aare hai for the US economy for, 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 from the year 1952 to 1998. So you can see pretty clearly that as inflation move kar hai, more or less the nominal interest rate move kar hai. Fisher equation to kehti hai ki dono ko, um, there should exist a one-to-one -one relationship between the two. And this, uh, the diagram that you see, it more or less supports that that when inflation increase kar hai, the nominal interest rate bhi increase kar hai. When inflation kam ho rahi hai, to hum dekhte hai, nominal interest rate bhi kam ho raha hai. So this actually supports the Fisher equation or the Fisher effect. A core um, support that you have through this diagram is that we have plotted many countries' plot kiya hai. Um, So this basically shows um, um, the relationship between inflation and the nominal interest rate. On the y-axis, we have inflation. On the sorry, on the x-axis, we have inflation. On the y-axis, we have the nominal interest rate. And what you see over here is that um, Countries which have a higher inflation level, for example, Kazakhstan, Armenia, they also have a higher nominal interest rate. And similarly, countries that have lower inflation rates, such as Singapore and Japan, they also have lower nominal interest rate. And so, Fisher equation is to hame that if inflation is less, then nominal interest rate is less. If inflation is more, nominal inflation is more. Okay. So, um, yes. So, that's basically your Fisher equation. Now, before we move on to this exercise, let me switch to um, the handouts for a while. This. Just need to hold on for a second. And uh, yes, so this is, I'm back to the handouts now. Handouts may be Fisher effect explained kiya gaya hai. So now we conclude karte hain baat ko, ke, um, what you see over here, this is actually 
the quantity theory of money. Okay, so what this tells me is percentage change in m plus the percentage change in velocity is equal to is inflation plus the percentage change in output. Now, if you assume k velocity or y constant here, then we can say that if money supply does be certain increase, so inflation uh, inflation may be does be certain is also happening. But velocity ki change or y may change here is constant. Hai. So, uh, yani ye jo do terms hai na, they fall out of the equation. Ye bhi zero hai aur ye wali term bhi zero hai. So, agar uh, central bank decides to increase the money supply by 10%, inflation is also going to increase by 10%. Now, moving to the Fisher equation, if inflation is increasing by 10%, to zahir hai, nominal interest rate is also going to increase by 10%. So, this is the summary of the results. So, according to the quantity theory, an increase in rate of money growth of 1% causes 1% increase in rate of inflation. And according to the Fisher equation, then a 1% increase in inflation in turn causes 1% increase in nominal interest rates. Okay. So um, now moving back to my slides. Um, okay, so I'll just stop this session at this point. There's one exercise uh, that you have to do on your own. Um, or uske baad jo hai na we're going to continue in the next part. I'm going to continue with inflation and interest rate. In the last class, I explained to you that uh, there are two types of interest rate. One is the nominal interest rate, and the other is the real interest rate. So nominal interest rates are simply the quoted. Or the stated interest rate, whereas the real interest rates they are adjusted for inflation. So, for example, uh, let's suppose that I buy a stock which is report which is worth hundred rupees today, and in the next year that stock increases to, uh, or the value of that stock increases to one twenty rupees. So, uh, the nominal return on my investment is actually twenty rupees or twenty percent. But the real return on my investment, if you look at the formula at the end, the real return on my investment will be the nominal return, which is 20% in this case, minus the inflation that has occurred in this one year period, which let's suppose is 14%. So the real return on my investment will equal um, uh, will equal 20% minus. 14, which is only, um, you know, which is only, okay, so you can work it out um, how much that is going to be. Okay, so, um, yeah, so it, it's going to be around 6%. Okay, so um, let's just just move ahead. Um, I also explained to you the Fisher effect in the last class. The Fisher equation is simply the nominal interest rate is equal to is a real interest rate plus inflation. So um, I need not elaborate much on this because uh, this was already explained to you in the previous uh, lecture. So um, R, which is the real interest rate, uh, this is determined by uh, this is determined where the supply for loanable funds is equal to is the demand for loanable funds, or it is determined where the goods market is in equilibrium. That is where the supply for goods and services is equal to is the demand for goods and services. So uh, for a given S and for a given investment, you can figure out the equilibrium interest rate. So as long as the supply for loanable funds and the demand for loanable funds do not change, the real interest rate is not going to change. Um, so the Fisher effect, effect simply states that there exists a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, inflation rate and the nominal interest rate. So now try to connect the quantity theory of money with the Fisher equation. The quantity theory of money explain to me that if the velocity is constant and the growth rate and output in constant, 
increase in money supply will result in an equal increase in inflation in the economy and that increase in inflation then it would in turn result in an equal increase in nominal interest rate okay so the fisher equation tells me that the increase in money supply which the central bank uh, you know brings about it will result in increase in inflation and now from the fisher equation you can clearly see that that increase in inflation will in turn fuel increase in nominal interest rate the real interest rate will not change because nothing has happened which changes the um which changes the market for loanable funds or which is changing the market for goods and services so r remains the same it's only the nominal variable which will get affected when inflation changes okay so we have already covered this slide so i'm going to skip it and um and this is the slide that i would like to start off with it's taking a little time to load but uh, Let's wait for a while. Let me just reload the slides. We'll just hold on for a second. Uh, the computer got stuck, so I am moving to the slide that I want to start off with now. So we have covered all of this bit. So this is the slide that we started off with, and uh, yeah. okay. So this is where I wanted to continue from. So um, we have talked about um, what is a nominal interest rate, what is real interest rate. Now the real interest rates are further divided into, into two types. so um a pi here it's the actual inflation which is not known until it has occurred and let's suppose that inflation um subscript e represents the expected inflation rate so real interest rate um which is defined as i minus the expected inflation this is called the ex ante real interest rate Okay. 
So um, this is called nominal interest rate minus the expected inflation rate. This is called the ex ante real interest rate. Or you can say that this is the expected real interest rate. It is what people expect at the time they buy a bond or take a loan. So uh, for example, if I take a loan today, um, I will take the loan at a nominal interest rate of I. And let's suppose the loan is due after one year. So the expected um, inflation in let's suppose this one year is this much. It's uh, by uh, subscript E. So the real um, the real interest rate or the real um, cost of borrowing funds in this case is going to be I minus the expected inflation rate. Of course, when I'm loaning out at this point in time, or if I'm buying a stock or a share at this point in time, I won't know the amount of inflation that's going to occur in that period of time. So the best that I can do is I can form an expectation about the inflation rate. So uh, the expected real interest rate is going to be I minus the expected inflation. And uh, the actual real interest rate or the ex post interest rate is defined as follows. It's I minus inflation. It is what people actually end up earning on their bond or paying on their loan. Okay. So um, this distinction, uh, you should know that whenever we are buying the bond, at the time we are buying it or at the time we are taking out loan, we don't know what the inflation rate is going to be. Hence, uh, the real, the expected real interest rate is going to be defined by I minus the expected inflation. On the other hand, after that one variable lapses, I for sure now know what was the inflation rate in the past one year. So the actual return on my investment will be I minus the actual inflation rate or the actual amount that I have to pay back uh, that will be paying on my loan. It's going to be I minus the actual inflation rate. So this distinction between the two type of real interest rates should be clear to you. Now, um, um, I would like you to recall uh, the relationship between the quantity theory and the um, the money demand function that we earlier on uh, derived. So the quantity theory of money assumes that demand for money depends on real income alone. So there was only one determinant of real interest, uh, one determinant of real money demand that we identified and that was Y. We assume that as Y increases, that is as output increases, people would like to buy more goods and services, hence they want to demand more money. So we, um, we assumed that Y was positively, positively related to money demand. So as Y increases, people would like to hold on to more money. Now I'm going to introduce another determinant of money demand, which is the nominal interest rate. So the nominal interest rate, it's the opportunity cost of holding money. Do you remember what opportunity cost was? It is whatever you have to give up um, or whatever you have to sacrifice to get something. So whenever you're holding on to money, what are you giving up? You're actually giving up the interest that you could have earned had you invested this money in buying some bond or other interest earning asset. Yeah, so that is why I can be considered as a cost of holding money. When you're holding money, you are actually giving up the opportunity of earning interest on other securities. So keeping this logic in mind, if the nominal interest rate increases, okay? so if the cost of holding onto money increases, if I have a loan, if I stock or bond is a very good interest rate, but if I leave it, if I'm holding onto money, and if so in this particular case, I is very high. So I, um, so if I increases, if there's a very attractive investment out there, which is giving me a lot of interest, my m demand for money is going to go down because I would rather hold, I would rather invest my money in that investment instrument than to hold on to money, which is not going to pay me anything. So again, money as it is, so value is because of inflation. So 
मनी को एज सच होल्ड करने में इतना फायदा नहीं है देर इज अ कॉस्ट ऑफ होल्डिंग ऑन टू मनी एंड दैट कॉस्ट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट दैट यू गोन टू सैक्रीफाइस हैड यू यू नो अर्न हैड यू ओन्ड अ सिक्योरिटी इन स्टेड ठीक है सो दैट इज वाई वी आर सेंग के नेगेटिव रिलेशनशिप एक्सेस करता है बिटवीन द नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड द मनी डिमांड ठीक है इफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ होल्डिंग ऑन टू मनी इंक्रीज इज यू वुड रॉ द होल्ड ऑन टू लेस मनी सो माई मनी डिमांड फंक्शन इट ट्रांसफॉर्म्स एज फॉलोज सो अर्ली ऑन इफ यू रिमेंबर क्वान्टिटी थेरी से अगर हम डिमांड फंक्शन डिराइव करें अगर आपको याद हो तो हमने कहा था कि मनी डिमांड जो है ना इट्स अ फंक्शन ऑफ वाई अ लोन लेकिन अब मैं कह रही हूँ कि नहीं मनी डिमांड ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट वाई और मनी डिमांड के बीच में पॉजिटिव रिलेशनशिप है नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट और मनी डिमांड के बीच में नेगेटिव रिलेशनशिप है सो यू नो ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड द टर्म दैट यू सींग एम डिवाइड बाय पी दिस इज द रियल मनी डिमांड इट्स नेगेटिवली रिलेटेड टू interest rate theek hai because interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding money and it's positively related to why so when output increases uh, you would like to buy more goods and services or ye goods and services khareedne ke liye zahir si baat hai aapko paise ki zarurat hai so the demand for money is going to increase as a result so higher why means more spending so you need more money l jo hai na it represents फंक्शन हम एफ लिखते हैं ना मैथ्स में तो उन्होंने यहाँ एफ की बजाय एल लिखा है और इसकी वजह यह है कि एल इज यूज फॉर मनी डिमांड फंक्शन बिकॉज मनी इज द मोस्ट लिक्विड एसेट सो एल बेसिकली जो है ना फंक्शन है इसको आप एफ भी कंसिडर कर सकते हैं बट इट सिंपली स्टेट्स द इक्वेशन दैट यू आर सींग ऑन द टॉप ऑफ योर स्लाइड इट सिंपली स्टेट्स दैट मनी डिमांड इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ बोथ नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड your real uh, and your real output now going a little further um i i can say that when people are deciding whether to hold on to money or bonds they don't know what inflation will turn out to be therefore um what we can do is we can replace this nominal interest rate or the the term i with r plus the expected inflation rate Do you remember the Fisher equation? Fisher equation says that the nominal interest rate equals the real interest rate plus inflation. So hence, the nominal interest rate for money demand is R plus the uh, the expected inflation. So I'm just rewriting my money demand function function this way. Now. um just like any other markets in the money market equilibrium is going to be established where the supply for the real money should equal the demand for real money so on this particular slide what you can see here is that on the right hand side you have the real money demand and on the left hand side of the equation you have the real money supply so in equilibrium दोनों को बराबर होना चाहिए द राइट हैंड साइड शुड इक्वल द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन सो एज आई स्टेटेड अर्लियर ऑन ये वाला जो टर्म आपको नजर आ रहा है ना लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे दिस इज द सप्लाई ऑफ रियल मनी बैलेंस एंड द टर्म ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड इज द रियल मनी डिमांड इक्वलिब्रियम इज गोइंग टू बी इस्टेब्लिश वेर रियल मनी सप्लाई इक्वल द रियल मनी डिमांड ना वॉट डिटर्म वॉट ना दिस स्लाइड इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड stand um and this table is very easy to um uh, um to understand what you see here is that m kya hai this, this is the money supply money supply kon control karta hai it's controlled by the fed or the central bank so we are assuming it's exogenous central bank apni koi logic apply karta hai and it decides to increase or decrease m which is the money supply हमने पढ़ा था कि मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज डिक्रीज करने के तीन तरीके हैं ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन चेंजिंग द रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट चेंजिंग द डिस्काउंट रेट तो वो हर बे सेंट्रल बैंक इस्तेमाल करती है और मनी सप्लाई को कम ज्यादा कर सकती है तो ये जो डिसीजन है सेंट्रल बैंक का मनी सप्लाई कम या ज्यादा करना इट्स एन एक्सॉजनस डिसीजन ठीक है टेक दिसन एज गिवन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉडल आर 
is a real interest rate, if you remember, and it adjusts to make the supply for loanable funds equal to the demand for loanable funds. Or you can say that uh, uh, at this R, uh, the supply for goods and services should equal to the demand for goods and services, or in other words, the goods market. It's an R which compels the goods market to, um, to come in equilibrium. जो और आपको वेरिएबल्स यहाँ नजर आ रहे हैं वो वाई है वाई हमने पहले ही ज्यूम किया था कि इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन सो एज लॉन्ग एज द इकोनॉमी हैज एम्प्लॉयड ऑल इट्स ऑफ फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड द टेक्नोलॉजी इज ज्यूम टू बी कांस्टेंट दैट इज एफ इज कॉन्स्टेंट द वाई इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी अ कॉन्स्टेंट एंड पी एडजस्ट to make the right hand side of the equation equal to the left hand side of the equation so here uh, the price is going to play a very important role this is here we are talking about the long run so price is going to play a very important role in at a price is going to play a very important role in um, equating uh, the supply for loanable uh, so so sorry um price is going to play a very important role in maintaining the equilibrium in this money market and here we are talking about the long run remember so isko let me just uh, elaborate this a little further as well in the next slide you can see how p responds to change in money supply okay um it's quite clear from here that for given values of r y and expected inflation a change in m theek okay? hai so if the agar central bank decide karti hai ki if it it will wants to increase the money supply this will cause an equal increase in money um so in order to ensure that left hand side of the equation is equal to is the right hand side of the equation ye cheez yahan likhi bhi hui hai a change in m causes p to change by the same percentage just like what the quantity theory of money states तो आप देख सकते हैं कि अगर मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज हो रही है तो पी इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज बाय द सेम अमाउंट नन ऑफ द वेरिएबल्स ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज चेंजिंग बिकॉज दे ज्यूम टू बी कांस्टेंट क्योंकि कुछ ऐसा नहीं हुआ इन द इन द मार्केट फॉर लोनेबल फंड्स जिसकी वजह से आर तब्दील हो कुछ ऐसा नहीं हुआ इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन और द टेक्नोलॉजी production which will result in y to change so simply money supply ke bharne se jo effect hota hai na that is on the prices that is on the inflation agar money supply 10 faisad badhegi to prices ya inflation bhi 10% increase hogi okay now what about expected inflation over the long run people don't consistently over or under फोकस्ट इन्फ्लेशन ठीक है कुछ साल आप इन्फ्लेशन ओवर एस्टिमेट करेंगे कुछ साल अंडर एस्टिमेट करेंगे लेकिन अगर आप एवरेज निकालें सो योर एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन इज गोइंग टू बी द एक्चुअल इन्फ्लेशन ऑन एवरेज ठीक है कभी आपने ओवर एस्टिमेट कर लिया कभी आपने अंडर एस्टिमेट कर लिया लेकिन अगर आप एवरेज निकालें तो मोर और लेस आपकी जो एक्सपेक्टेशन है दैट विल बी इक्वल टू इज द एक्चुअल लेवल ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इन द इकोनमी सो इन द शॉर्ट रन expected inflation may change when people get new information theek hai so aap apni expectation thodi sa aapko kuch naya information milti hai so your expectation regarding inflation might change for example suppose the fed announces it will increase m next year yani jo central bank announce kar rahi hai ki wo next year money supply increase karegi is saal usne money supply increase nahi ki it's only an announcement it's a rumor कि अगले साल सेंट्रल बैंक जो है वो मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज करेगी सो पीपल विल एक्सपेक्ट नेक्स्ट ईयर प्राइस टू बी हायर ठीक है सो एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन इवाइजेस सो जाहिर सी बात है जब आपको ये पता हो या आपने ये रूमर सुना हो कि कल को मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज होगा तो आप यू वॉन्ट टू रिवाइज यू एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन यू वॉन्ट टू से ओके सो नेक्स्ट ईयर इन्फ्लेशन भी ज्यादा होगी सो हमारी एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन ऑल्सो right this this will affect p now even though m hasn't changed yet okay, so you can clearly see with this help of a uh, the, the help of this equation that agar expected inflation increases 
For a given values of R, Y, and M, what will happen if the expected inflation increases? Your nominal interest rate is going to increase. Okay, and this follows through the Fisher equation. So, if nominal inflation increase कर रही है, तो आप देख सकते हैं कि real money demand is going to decrease. ने establish किया था ना अगर आपको याद हो कि अगर nominal interest rate increase होता है, तो real um, money demand is going to decrease. यानी the left hand side of the equation is going to decrease. अब ऐसा क्या किया जाए to restore equilibrium? आप देख सकते हैं राइट हैंड साइड पे एम कांस्टेंट है अभी मनी सप्लाई सेंट्रल बैंक ने चेंज नहीं किया तो पी पे सारा प्रेशर पड़ेगा कि वो चेंज हो इन ऑर्डर टू इंश्योर के राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन इज इक्वल टू इज द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन सो पी इंक्रीजेस टू मेक द रियल मनी सप्लाई फॉल टू रीएस्टैब्लिश इक्विलिब्रियम So why is inflation bad? इसको करने से पहले हम दोबारा इस स्लाइड पे जाते हैं देखिए मैंने यहाँ दो चीजें इस्टेब्लिश की है अगर तो हम दो सिनारियो मैंने एक्सप्लेन किए थे अगर तो हम एज्यूम करें कि लेफ्ट एंड साइड रिमेन्स द सेम यानी आर रिमेन्स द सेम एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन रिमेन्स द सेम वाई रिमेन्स द सेम अगर सेंट्रल बैंक मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज करती है तो प्राइस विल हैव टू इंक्रीज बाय इक्वल अमाउंट सिमिलरली अगर सेंट्रल बैंक मनी सप्लाई डिक्रीज करने का सोचती है तो प्राइस विल हैव टू डिक्रीज बाय इक्वल अमाउंट जो मैंने दूसरा सिनेरियो एक्सप्लेन किया उसमें हो ये रहा था कि फेडरल रिजर्व जो है या जो सेंट्रल बैंक है वो अगले साल इट वॉन्ट्स टू इंक्रीज द मनी सप्लाई तो अभी मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज हुई नहीं है लेकिन अगले साल होने का अंदेशा है तो अगर ऐसा है तो एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज जिसकी वजह से नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द मनी डिमांड इज गोइंग टू फॉल एंड एज अ रिजल्ट प्राइस इंक्रीजेस यानी कल को जो मनी सप्लाई ने इंक्रीज होना था दैट हैज रिजल्टेड इन इंक्रीज इन प्राइस टूडे सो इट्स जस्ट लाइक अ सेल्फ फुलफिलिंग प्रोफेसी कि आप एक्सपेक्ट करें कि कल को प्राइस बढ़ेगी एंड दैट एक्सपेक्टेशन इज एक्चुअली क्यूलिंग इंक्रीज इन प्राइस टूडे ओके सो लेट्स जस्ट ओके सो व्हाई इज इन्फ्लेशन पैट ओके आई एम वेल वी गोइंग टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन इन अ वाइल इसको हम जो है अभी स्किप करते हैं ओके लेट मी जस्ट स्किप दिस बेट हाँ ये चीज मैं आई आई जस्ट कंक्लूड दिस लेक्चर बाय गोइंग ओवर दिस लाइन के द क्लासिकल व्यू ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन अब ये जो है ना स्लाइड इट्स जस्ट अ समरी ऑफ व्हाट आई सेड सो फार द क्लासिकल थेरी स्टेट्स दैट द चेंज इन प्राइस लेवल is merely a change in unit of measurement aapne uh, fisher equation ki madad se dekha ki jab inflation increase hoti hai nominal interest rate increase hota hai real interest rate pe koi farak nahi padta jab inflation increase hoti hai to aapki nominal wages mein izafa hoga theek hai to sare aapke jo hai na agar inflation badhti hai khali aapke nominal variables pe farak padta hai real variables remain the same nothing happens to the real variable um so what i'm saying i'm trying to say here is for example aap ek property kharidte hain um worth uh, 100 lakh and uh, agle saal jo hai na let's suppose ek saal mein jo inflation hai wo 20% hai so agle saal us property ki keemat 120 uh, 120 lakh ho jayegi so ye jo 20 lakh ka increase mujhe us प्रॉपर्टी की कीमत में नजर आ रहा है दैट इज सोलली बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन सो इन्फ्लेशन जो है ना या इंक्रीज इन प्राइसेस इट्स इट मेली चेंजेस द यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट पहले वही प्रॉपर्टी या वही मकान 100 100 लाख का था आ जो है ना नेक्स्ट ईयर बिकॉज ऑफ 20 परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन वही मकान 120 लाख का है तो देखिए दिस इज ओनली अ कॉस्मेटिक चेंज Um, जो मकान वही है उसका जो उसकी जो वैल्यू है यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट है पहले 100 था अब 120 हो गया है 
So it's, it's just a revision in the unit of measurement. Makan to wohi hai, property to wohi hai. Kuch aisa change nahi hua, but there has been no real change for the value of that property to rise. Agar to hum assume karte ke ji, is saal mein uh, hua kuch yu ke bilkul yu hunne property kharidi uske saath se motorway banane ka faisla hua hai. Ha. That will result in the property ki jo asal kiemat hai, to real kiemat hai to increase. So now, if uh, the originally us plot ki kiemat ya property ki kiemat 100 lakh thi, to agle saal uski kiemat mein expect kar rahi hu 130 lakh ho jayegi. Kyu? 20 lakh ka jo increase aaya, that is contributed to inflation. Okay, 20 percent ki inflation thi economy mein, to isliye us property ki kiemat upwardly revise ho gayi. Jo remaining 10 lakh kiemat bhari hai na, that is because something real has happened, which has resulted in that property ki kiemat to rise. And what real thing was that the motorway was going to start with the plot. Or it can also be that the airport will start with the airport, which we bought the property. The airport, uh, there is a new airport which is being planned to be constructed near that property. So that may result in the, in the property ki value to rise. So if it's real, then the uh, property ki can also be increased. Price ki tabdili se, yani agar inflation bhaar rahi hai, to aapki jo hai na property ki kiemat, matab jo hai na it increases from 100 to 20. Agar kuch real hua hai, tab it can increase more than 20. Lekin agar kuch real nahi hua, to property bhi hui hai, uski bas simply, uski a mal, pehle uski value, ya unit of measurement uska 100 lakhs tha, ab it has revised to 120 lakh. So, um, you can think, of this in this manner ke inflation ke bharne se khali ek matlab cosmetic changes aati hain agar 20% inflation bhari to meri tankhah jo hai uh, wo 1 lakh se am 120 lakh ho jayegi so it's a cosmetic change my purchasing power hasn't changed jitna main uh, pichle saal lakh rupaye se khareed sakti thi utni hi cheeze main 120 lakh se khareed sakti hu aaj so my real cost my real Cost of living hasn't changed. My real standard hasn't changed. It's just a cosmetic increase in price level. Take a cosmetic increase. I hope you summa jarao. I say up the cosmetic supply karte. So it's it's just it makes you look good, but you know, shakal to the hoti na. So that is what inflation is inducing. It's just revising the prices in the economy. It revises the nominal wages, it revises uh, the no, the and the nominal interest rate but real jo variables hain are they remain the same real output remains the same theek hai real interest rate remains the same real variables pe koi asar nahi padta khali jo nominal variables hain only those get affected